welcome to the second episode in my series, Frontiers in Research. In this episode, we'll be talking volcanoes, and more specifically about the state-of-the-art laboratory experiments that allow us to understand processes of erupting volcanoes and the nature of volcanic domes. This seminar was led by Jackie Kendrick of Liverpool University. Her work primarily centres around rock mechanics with applications to volcanology. This can include investigating the role of friction in volcanic environments, including the ascent of highly viscous magma, the stability of volcanic edifices, and the transport of energetic flows. Volcanoes. They're not as simple as you may think. In fact, they exist in stark contrast to the simple bicarbonate and vinegar models that you've probably created at one time or another. They are dynamic and sometimes complicated beasts. Jackie Kendrick has been using laboratory experiments to figuratively bring the volcano into the lab in order to piece together the eruptive magmatic history of volcanoes. This seminar highlighted the eruptive processes of specifically dome-type volcanoes. Here are a couple of examples of dome volcanoes to help you better picture them. In Washington, USA, Mount St. Helens, which was renowned for exploding violently in the 1980s. And in Chile, you have Keaton, which has been active in the last decade. In a volcanic system, lava is driven through the volcano by gas, a main mechanism in driving eruptions. Gas is always looking for a way to escape the volcanic system. Lava has an influence in forming these escape groups, as a viscous fluid that responds to stress and strain imposed on it by the volumes of moving gas. Thinning of lava, or reduction in its viscosity, allows faster flow of gas through the fluid. If the gas in lava builds pressure and remains trapped, it can cause the formation of rock fracturing and deformation, at which point it can escape through the cracks caused by fracturing. But if it remains trapped, it can only degas as a massive explosion. Recurring, trapping, bulging, fracturing, deformation, then degassing, and fracturing rehealing, a temperature controlled mechanism, degrade the rock, forming a sort of cohesive rubble rather than a rock. These processes alter the structure of the volcano, the type and timing of its eventual eruption. So being able to gain an understanding of the cyclic nature of these gas, lava and rock interactions allows us to have a better understanding of the eruption processes that take place within a volcano. Jackie showed us two exper experiments that she had set up and created. One allowed us to see the microscale crystallisation plasticity through time, through cyclic loading and unloading. And as these processes kept going and going, it would become harder and harder for the grains to remain plastic. A second experiment showed us two rock faces put together. One moved at high speed and showed us the power of frictional heating and how rock surfaces can go from slipping to fusing. By doing laboratory work and understanding how eruptions take place and how eruptive mechanisms can change the internal structure of a volcano going through a period of eruption, there can be better accuracy in volcanic models, aiding the prediction of eruption timing, length and intensity. We were showed being able to recreate controlled lab experiments are essential to picking apart the processes of an eruption, allowing a better understanding of what is involved as part of one. In order to wrap up this episode and conclude with my thoughts, I'll talk a bit about what I took from the seminar. Jackie presented us with what she discovered through her research of volcanoes, and the internal and external workings of them. What she also presented was a pure scientific method, breaking down and building up an understanding of the processes and mechanisms that accumulate in a volcano. She did this as experiments in the lab, which could then be related to the field study. Personally, I think it's a very pure and simple way to build a true understanding. And now she and we know more about the processes that build into an eruption, aiding in volcanic study. Thank you for getting to the end of this episode. If you've enjoyed learning about this topic and are interested in more about geological and geographical fronts and research, I recommend you check out the other episodes in this playlist. Thank you for listening and goodbye.